Welcome to incredibly useful exercises for the double bass, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short stolen moments. Welcome to the third in a six part series on spiccato, the bouncing bow stroke. This series explores the techniques and applications of spiccato as they relate to different tempos and bouncing styles. Here's how we're breaking this series down. General overview and preparation, medium spiccato, heavy spiccato, light spiccato, sautier and flex strokes, and spiccato between 100 and 120, which I call the break. Today, we'll cover heavy spiccato at slow tempos between 50 and 90. This is used when you really want to make the walls shake and drive the orchestra. It's used in a lot of German symphonies and operas, and when it's done right, it can be a lot of fun. I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. He sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my basses keeps them sounding full, free, and beautiful. Many professional working bassists throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website listed below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and to see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. Spiccato's the first exercise we're doing that has multiple high ratings. These ratings aren't precise. Consider them the maximum ratings, depending on which variation you decide to explore. It's six minutes long, but can go much longer if you get into a flow state. Velocity and control are a six, mindfulness, coordination, and endurance are a three, expression is a two, and power is zero, except for heavy spiccato, where power now becomes a four. We play spiccato to develop and exercise the four types of spiccato families as they relate to different tempos, medium, heavy, light, and sautier. Today's heavy spiccato, which is a slow, heavy stroke very near the frog. It's honestly my favorite spiccato. It's indulgent, loud, easy to control, and ultimately satisfying. I never really got this style until I discovered two things in my practice. I learned to get very close to the frog, and I learned to control my drops and catches. When it clicked, my whole playing life changed because I learned that for the most, pa most part in heavy operas and symphonies, I only need to use about this much bow. Less really is more here. The slowest excerpt I've used this stroke in is the overture to Die Valkyrie, and it's still one of my favorite musical moments ever. We played it at about 54. It was really slow. <laughs> So let's craft the stroke by starting with trampolines basketballs. For light spiccato, I settle in the middle. For medium spiccato, I settle near just above the balance point around here. But for heavy, the heavy stroke, I'll settle under the hand past the index finger, very near the frog. This will feel strange at first for French bow players. This is in the basketball range, which means there's no forearm rotation like the basketballs. Each stroke leads from the frog and each stroke is active. German bow holds are already set, so you don't need to change anything. French bow players do a different setup for this stroke. In the other spiccato families, we move our thumb towards the top. In the heavy spiccato, we move it slightly under the stick, and also since the stroke takes place below the balance point, we need to drop our elbow and place the base of the pinky against the bow to add a counterbalance to the weight in the upper half. This allows us to control the bow drop and catch when we play very close to the frog. Remember at each tempo, I look for muscles to relax, and use the most efficient motion that's needed for the bounce. So I'll start with trampolines and basketball, starting at 50. One E and a, two E and a, three E and. Settle near the frog. 
Detaché. Add the bounce. Then with French bow, trampolines. This is the slowest tempo you'll ever play spiccato. And under the hand, now detaché. Add the bounce. Put it up to 60. German first. Basketballs. Just two contact points, all you need. And then at the frog, you'll feel it when your arm has to basketball. Detaché. Add the bounce. Relax my shoulder. Flat hair. French bow. Basketball. Under the hand for basketball. Bounce. Up to 70. German first. Detaché. Add the bounce. Then French bow, basketball. It seems faster than the last one, but it's still pretty slow. You'll feel a little sense of acceleration. You can let that pass. Detaché. Add the bounce. Practice the catch. Up to 80. Again, it feels fast right now, but I just have to think about it as being slow. At the frog, detaché. Add the bounce. French bow, get the pinky set up, basketball, detaché, add the bounce, and then finally at 90, Fastest one for today. Detaché. Add the bounce. And then French bow. Basketball. Detaché. Add the bounce. And that's that. Here it is in slow motion. You can see that the hair stays on the string longer than the medium spiccato. The bow doesn't have much of a bounce, but you can see that the hair and the string absorb most of the attack. Notice that each down bow starts from the D string side and rebounds to the E string side. It's like a seesaw. This allows each up bow to be as active and powerful as the down bow. My wrist is completely passive in this stroke. Any rotation in the wrist will kill the attack. This is another benefit of the trampolines basketball exercise. It teaches the wrist not to twist at the frog. Also, notice how the right elbow leads the bow downwards and how my elbow never, 
ever extends to push the bow into the string. See how the rebound stays very close to the string with no wasted drift between bounces. This leads us to the two things that you really need to know about heavy spiccato, the drop and the catch. The drop goes like this. Put your leg up on a chair or a stool and hold your right arm above your leg with your elbow bent. Now just drop your arm onto your leg. And that's it. When you drop your arm, your elbow falls first after your shoulder relaxes. This is the wrong way to do it, to throw your hand onto your leg. If the hand goes first or you extend your elbow, you're doing it wrong. Drop from the elbow first. Now try the drop about two to three inches above your leg and this is what it'll feel like. Now let's try the drop with the bow. There are 10 important points to the drop and catch. I practice this on the B on the A string because I love that note on this bass. Remember to always make the string go fat and listen for a strong tone with no trash in the sound. Number one, drop from about two to three inches above the string. Number two, pull from the back. When you do it right, it'll feel like you're rowing a boat. We use our latissimus dorsi muscles to generate power. Try it on a detache stroke. This is the point of the other exercise, power sixteenths. Number three, don't raise the bow before the drop. Just set it and drop. Number four, hit the string under the second finger on the down bow. For the German bow, hit it about two inches from the frog. Number five, drop the down bow from the D string side, leading from the frog. The down bow, number six, finishes on the E string side, where you catch it. Number seven, after the drop, catch the bow two to three inches above the string with no drift. Number eight, hit the string just above the first finger on the up bow. German bow players land about three to four inches from the frog. And number nine, drop the bow up bow from the E string side. Number 10, the up bow bounces off on the D string side where you catch it. Practice the drop and catch on one note. Remember, don't allow any drift or extra motion after you catch it. Then on two notes, practice starting on both down and up bows. And then on three notes. And continue from there as much as you want. When you go over to the D string, you can't hit it with the same power as the A and the E string. Don't overpower it. And on the G string, you really have to pull back. If you drop with full weight, you'll strangle it. Loosen your elbow to pull the drop back a little until the tone is resonant, but still strong. Now that it's working, let's road test it on our short scale, the first five notes of an F major scale. French bow. It really 
really sounds different on French, doesn't it? pretty good so I'll go to the whole exercise now. Here's how we play it. Today I'll play it at 60. I'll work to keep the tone clean and free of any trashy sounds. As I go I'll explore different angles of the bow and hair flatness. Because I'm not doing it with the metronome I'll be relying on my own inner sense of rhythm to keep it steady. And lastly for the heavy spiccato I'll check in to make sure that I'm pulling from the back and not just from the arm. Before I play, I plan my recovery strategy because once I start, I don't let any mistake or fatigue stop me, just like in live performance. If I lose the bounce, I'll just keep playing detaché until the end of the scale, find the stroke again, and resume the exercise. Also, if I feel like I've gotten too fast or too slow, I'll check in when I get to four strokes per note. Okay, let's play. I'll check with the metronome, find the stroke on the F on the D string, Memorize how it feels in my shoulder and back. Turn the metronome off. And play. Two and three and four and.
And that is heavy spiccato. Satisfying and when you find the sweet spot in the bow, pretty much plays itself. Here's a list of some common excerpts that fit into the heavy spiccato family. Check out the description below for a list of the excerpts ranked according to all the families and tempos. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find spiccato as useful for your performance as it has been for mine. I present this in the way that I've used and benefited from it. I don't intend to say that it's the only way to practice or to approach spiccato. You can adapt these ideas to your style of curiosity, conditioning, or teaching. Practice this and all exercises in this series in short, stolen moments, or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and leave any questions, comments, observations, success stories, or suggestions below. Please check out the incredibly useful exercises series of workout books, available in paperback and ebook on the Amazon site in your country. I look forward to you joining me next time. Thank you, and be well, friends.